Hello everybody, we'll get started here in just a moment. Let me get my camera turned. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> I was setting up the camera for the book and forgot to turn it back when I went live. How is everybody doing this? It's a bright and sunny, cold Sunday day here in North Central Illinois. Hope everyone is doing well. Woohoo. Have a little bit more coffee and we'll get started. As you can see, I've been busy putting eyes on my chicken pin cushions, which is what our live last night was about. And I'd started out doing embroidery, embroidery knots for the eyes, but you know what, everybody? I think it just looks better. I'm using vintage buttons. I have a lot of vintage buttons. And that's what you see here on the eyes for my chicken pin cushions. Hi, hi, Tresha. Hi, Vanessa. Hello. Happy Sunday. Oh my gosh, everybody. We are going to begin. Hi, Janelle. Oh, lucky you. I Just please keep that snow right there in Boise, please. I've been to Boise. Beautiful city. But welcome, welcome everybody. This is quilt top number five. Yes, you heard it right. Let me make some room here. Cut a couple of my chickens down. This is quilt top number five from our Quilts in Italy series. This is the book that all of these quilt tops are based on. That's where the patterns are. If you want the pattern, buy the book. There's a link in the description below where you can actually purchase this quilt book with 20 different quilt patterns in it. We are doing for the month of December. Uh, anyway, we're this is the one we're starting. Losing my marbles. Oh my gosh. How fitting for me. Hi, Fiona. Oh. You live in a country I so much want to visit. Beautiful Scotland. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's on my bucket list to come to Scotland. And, oh my gosh, I could totally lose my marbles. Name of this quilt top in Scotland, that's for sure. Wow. So, all of the quilts in this book are based on K-Facet fabrics. And... If you're going to make this along with me, you can use any fabric you want. We're going to talk about fabric selection today and color theory. But I'm actually going to use, I don't have enough different K fabrics in my possession right now to make this quilt. So I am using, I do have enough different batiks. I have a lot of batiks and I'm going to make mine out of batik fabrics. I, this is considered a very scrappy quilt and <clears throat> since it is scrappy you can make it whatever size you want and however many pieces we're going to talk about all that here today how many pieces you'll need to cut the next episode is where i'm actually going to start cutting the pieces because i'm still pulling all my different fabrics together there is a lot of different fabrics for this quilt top everyone so I'm going to swap, swoo, switch to my other camera and so you can see the book. And then I'm going to start explaining what has to happen to make, to make this quilt come together for us. Here we go. And you can see here is my book. Where's my other screen? Here we go. Here's my book. Quilts in Italy, K Facet. So losing my marbles, and this is this I would consider this an art quilt simply because it's very abstract. I love it. It just really speaks to me. But as you can see, when I turn the page, everyone, here is the list of fabric right here. There's a lot of different fabrics in this quilt. This is one of those quilts, the more varied fabrics you have, the better it's going to look. 
and I'm going to count the size of the quilt will measure six, approximately 60 by 60 inches. 289 squares each three and a half inches finished. That means we're going to cut four inch squares of fabric for this. And 115 circles applique to the center of some of the squares. So as you can see, not every square has a circle applique on it. If we go to the next page, if you want to follow and try to make it as close to this photo as you can, like Mr. Kaif um, designed it, there's a color, a circle placement chart here, so you can spread them out. Color chart here for fabric, for color groupings. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different color groups for this. This is, would be one where fat quarters would be very friendly because you're going to need and even a small fat quarter, like instead of a fourth of a yard, eighth of a yard cuts. If you have someone with, if you have a shop near you that'll do, have bundles of one eighth of a yard cuts, it'd be a great way to do this quilt with that. Because as you can see, there are in the quilt top alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There's more. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Oh my gosh, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 57 different prints for the quilt top alone. Now I may not have that many myself even though I have a lot of batiks, but <clears throat> you get the idea. What you're going to do, we're going to start out when we start cutting we're going to cut four inch squares and then we're going to applique the circles right on top of some of the squares and this is if you're not good at just going totally serendipity serendipitous um, and making it totally scrappy and totally totally by chance how they're sewn together you can follow this chart for a placement guide. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out my squares and then I'm going to applique some of, I'm going to applique them, but then I'm going to put them all in a big bag and I'm going to draw them out randomly and sew them together. How it comes out is how it will come out. That's what I am personally going to do. It will totally be random and serendipitous as to how they like how the squares are sewn together. I think that will make it fun. It'll make it interesting. And I've done it before. <clears throat> Serendipity always makes it beautiful. It's a good thing. And those are the pages for this, this layout right here. So as you can see here, it's 17 squares across, 17 squares down. And those, each one is three and a half inches finished. In the back of the book, this is our template. If you're going to cut out circles and do uh, turned, turned under edge, edge turned applique, there we go, got it. <laughs> The inner part of this, you see it's got a double line here on that circle. The inner is the finished size. So if I take a ruler, have a little three and a half inch omni grid ruler here. So those would be approximately two and a half inch finished circles. One, two and a half. So I'm actually going to cut little squares of fabric for my circles 
I'm going to cut them at, let's see here, three inches. Yeah, three inch, three and a half inches, something like that. Probably three and a half, I'll have a little extra. I don't mind a little wastage because I want it to turn out really nice. This is going to go on a wall in my, my studio once it's complete. Let's get back to our page here and get to the bigger picture. Okay, but as you can see here, back in this other diagram, I'm going to flip back and forth because this will help. I think this will really help you with how to do fabric placement. Notice this little area down here where it's the dark blue. Well, right there is that. Okay, oops, there we go. Right there, right here is right there. This area is right in here. So this is a guide, a guideline. The, all this is is a guide. You don't have to do it like this, but if you want it to come out like Kafe designed it, you want to follow this color chart in the book to get your fabric placement. Like I said, I'm going to do mine in a serendipitous way and totally random. Once I get my 119 squares applique, the applique ones and the non-applique ones are going in into a bag and I'm going to blindly pull them out and start sewing them together. How it comes out is how it will come out. <laughs> Woo wee. Hi Molly. <laughs> okay Molly. Yeah so it's difficult with these cameras and everything Molly to get that just right so let me come back around. Hold on. I was holding it actually to my side so that I could read it. Is that how you want it, Molly? Right there like that. To me, that's upside down is what it looks like on my screen. Please answer in the comments section, Molly, so I'll know if this is, if it, the way it is right now is how you want it, right here. And everyone, if you're really going to make this quilt, you really need the book, because it's just, yeah, you could take a guess at it, but it'll make life so much easier if you have the book with all the written instructions. If you're going to make these, you really need to use to buy the book. That way you're not violating anyone's copyright. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> so as you can see, to me, these two areas of color are kind of very similar, as are these. And then you have your lights, like your pinks and your lime greens in the center. And then a splash of polka dots and stripes throughout. It's upside down. Thank you, Lucy. That's what I thought. So, right there. Should be right side up to everybody. I can see that in the picture. <clears throat> okay, so. Next. Let's get that down just a bit. So, as I was saying, <clears throat> to well, with my eye, what I see here are actually... Five, five different areas of color. There's this dark, dark area here, and this one. And then you have this reddish area, and this darker reddish area. And right in through here is like some teal. And then it transitions into the greens. Greens, and then pinks right there in the center. So, like I said, if you're going to make it exactly like this in the book, on page, this is page 115, on page 116 it lists all the different fabrics. Here's a list of all the different fabrics to make it just like the picture in the book. And most of these cuts are one-eighth of a yard cuts. 
So it'd be a fat eight bundles if your local quilt shop has those. If you're gonna buy fabric online, no one will no one will cut an eighth of a yard for you. Okay. So there is that. Another way to get a good mix of fabrics for this is to buy char charm square packs and cut them up. For instance, the five, ch five inch square charm square packs. There's 42 different pieces in it. If you buy a layer cake of cake, there will be 42 layer cakes, which you could then cut up into each layer would cut up into four or five inch squares. And then that would give you, let's see, let me do the math in my head, 42 times five, 210 five inch squares, which would be more than enough for <clears throat> to cut your four inch squares out of. Or you could just make these squares five inches square and the math would be so much easier because if each one of these is five inches, it would make the quilt bigger. It would actually make it five, let's see, five times 17, 35 and 50, 85 by 85 inches. If you use five inch squares and then finish, if you're gonna do that, you would want to do, you would want your circles to finish at three inches instead of two and a half. You just have to go up half an inch on that. So there's a lot of ways you can alter the pattern to make the quilt work for you better. And after I just said what I said, I'm now got to decide if I'm going to do it at this size here in the book, or if I might just cut all of my squares at five, all of my um, boutiques at five inches to make these with. I've got to make that decision here in the next couple of days. <laughs> but we will be doing another episode later this week and then on the following weekend as well. The next episode, I will actually have all my fabric together and I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut everything. And I'm going to do how I'm going to do my applique. I'm not going to do hand applique. That's just not going to happen. However, what I do plan on doing, I am going to use, you're welcome, Molly. So Molly, the four inch squares could be cut with AccuQuilt. Not sure about the circles. You could always, I'm sure there's a circle that's close to that size. Totally up to you how you do that. I'm personally, I'm going to use the, I'm going to do most of mine using the circular attachment to do my circle applique so I don't have to cut any circles. It'll just make it a whole lot easier. And then just do a traditional applique method that way without using the embroidery arm. I will do some of them on the embroidery arm, but I'm going to start this process doing using the circular attachment for my, my sewing machine. And I'll show everyone how to use that on the first sewing day. That's what I'm going to be doing is applique. So there's 119, oh, 115 circles that we'll have to applique to get started. Once the applique is done, then it's just show, sewing all the squares together. So it's not going to be that difficult to make. Truly, it's not. Let's see here. Another way this could be done <clears throat> is to you can piece the squares together and then put it in a hoop and do your circular applique, make your, do the applique in the hoop with the embroidery machine just as you normally would. It would do a placement stitch and then a tack down stitch and then trim the fabric close to the stitching and then cover up the raw edges with another stitch. 
that's another way to do it. It's a much more time intensive way in my opinion. But uh, Molly, I will also check, see if I have any um, AccuQuilt circular dies that are close to that color. I don't think I do, but I will check and see and let you know on the next episode about cutting it all with AccuQuilt. The four inch squares, now that would be the cut size, not the finish size. I'm certain that AccuQuilt does have a, have a die that will cut four inch squares of fabric. It'd just be easier in my opinion if you just upsize it and cut it at five inches. It'd take just a little bit more fabric, but to do the math, it'd be a whole lot easier. Just however you want to do it. I haven't decided if I'm going to do the four and this the smaller size or not yet. I just haven't decided that yet. <laughs> Okay, so your assignment between now and then is to look at these pictures and decide what color combinations you want to use. If you're going to go with the CAFE, I would recommend these beautiful bright jewel tone colors of his because it really is pretty. And the same way, if you're going to use batiks, you could easily replicate most of these colors with a batik fabric, excuse me, as well. Okay. Let's see here. Lots of fun. <clears throat> and I recognize a lot of these cave fabrics right here. But I think that'll be a this going to be a really interesting one to do. And I, you know, I'm going to just stick with the size that's in the book. I've just made that decision. For me, that's what I'm going to do if you're having to buy a lot of fabric for this. Mathematically, it would be easier to figure out using 5 inch squares instead of 4 inch cut squares. Because like I said, you could, use, you could buy a couple of layer cakes and that would yield enough fabric for the complete top if you bought two layer cakes of fabric. With 42 10 inch squares, cut those into four equal parts which means you take a, t a 10 inch square and cut it this way, five inches, and then this way, and you'd have four five inch squares of fabric or 210 out of one layer cake. Two of those would be more than enough. You'd have some left over to make your quilt out of. Pretty cool. And it's nice, this, circ, this is called the circle placement diagram. If you just want the randomness that it shows on the CAF quilt, you can follow this chart and be able to do that super duper easy. Molly, what I would do, <clears throat> I would cut the, the four or five inch squares for the backing fabric. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm also going to cut the four or five inch squares for each one of the circles as well. I'm not going to cut out individual circles because with that circular attachment, it'll do all that work for you. You'll just have to trim it. Once you do a tack down stitch to the fabric using the circular attachment, you just trim it with your curved applique scissors and then stitch down a stitch around the edge to cover it all up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Vanessa. I'm, I think there's something going around because we're not filling 100% either, to be perfectly honest. I was upstairs resting before um, this episode was ready to start. 
But yes, next episode, I'm going to cut all the fabric and I'll try to have most of it cut before then. I'm going to cut all of mine into, oh God, what size quilt do I want? I really don't want this one on the bed. I'm going to, I'm going to make it the four, I'm going to cut mine four inch squares. So I'm going to cut a total. Check it out, everybody. I mean, I got to, I got to make a decision. So I'm going to cut four inch squares, 289, <clears throat> right here is where I'm getting this number at, right here. I'm going to cut 289 squares at four inches, three and a half finished. That's for the back, the squares of fabric that are sewn together. And then I'm going to cut 115 four inch squares for the circles as well. And I'm going to keep it random and it'll be very random the way I do this. It says right in the instructions, by its very nature, this is a scrappy quilt. So you can choose how many circles to applique. In this book, they were all hand appliqued. It said this quilt could be made with fewer fabrics as long as you choose a wide assortment of colors. So there you go. But I've also got some Tula Pink. I'm, yeah, so I don't have enough. I even don't have enough of Tula though to do this quilt in. I wish I did. But I do have enough, a wide variety of batiks right now, and I can pull out most of these colors using my batik stash. Okay, pretty cool. So there we have it. Woohoo. Yes, a wall hanging size would be nice for this, Vanessa. I agree. I think it'd be beautiful hanging on a wall. But just remember, if you're going to cut four inch squares, you'll have a wall hanging. If you cut five inch squares and follow this, you will have a bed quilt. If you do it with five inch squares, <clears throat> your finished quilt will be 85 by 85 inches. If you cut four inch squares, the finished quilt will be 59 by 59, basically 60 by 60. So that's the difference an inch makes. <laughs> Because it's 17 squares across and 17 squares down. Woohoo. Alrighty. This is going to be a lot of fun to make. I haven't used my circular attachment in a very long time. This will make good use of it. Oh yes, Molly, I will actually do it all live on camera on how to use that circular attachment. You'll see me use it live because I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm going to do all of these using the circular attachment. I think that would be the easiest way. You don't have to cut one circle, any individual circles that way. And I just feel it will go a whole lot quicker and I'm not doing any hand applique. So I'll be able to use one of the decorative stitches on my machine to actually um, go around each one of these circles. And I'll have to pick a, I'm not sure what my thread choice will be yet. A lot of times when I do something like this, I'll do all the appliques with black thread because it really kind of pops and makes it look like stained glass. But we'll see, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Let's see here. Woohoo, that's gonna be beautiful, can't wait. Alrighty. But the circular attachments is really a very cool attachment. Let me pull mine out of the drawer back here, just a moment. Okay. When you get that circular attachment, it comes with several things. The actual hardware part of it I have in this little plastic box. Let's 
So that and this, this has a little sharp pin on it. And that attachment also comes with two feet that one could use. A, a triple cording foot. Now we're talking Baby Lock Hero. All, most machine manufacturers do make a circular attachment for your machine. And then this is a couching foot where you can put a thick cord or a piece of yarn under there. And it's actually called the braiding foot. Is the, the proper name for it. <clears throat> but this is the attachment we'll be using. These are all in centimeters, so I will do the math and convert that to where we want it. I'm going to do mine at two and a half inches. So, <clears throat> and what we'll do, once this is attached to the machine, what we'll do is, if you see those little crosshairs right there, this goes down into that. Hold on there. That will go into there. Then this will come out. <clears throat> this will it'll have a little metal tip on it right there. And what will happen is we'll put our fat center of our fabric on that, and that's how it will rotate. But I have a video here on YouTube on how to use this. I'll do, I'm going to show you live how to use it when we start you assembling, doing all the applique for our little quilt here. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Put it back in its box. I have like these little boxes that have the little compartments in it for like little accessories like this because that way I do not lose or misplace any of my parts. Okay. Alrighty. Let's get back over here. Let's see. Right. Get that window back up. Okay. Hello there. <laughs> there we go. And let's see. So much fun. You could use for applique thread. You could use cotton thread. You could use quilting thread. You could use embroidery thread. I wouldn't recommend anything, uh, any thicker thread pros probably than a, well, nothing lar larger than a 12 weight. But I'd probably stick with like a 30 weight or 30 to 40 weight thread for this. Um, and you can, if you're going to use a heavier thread for the applique with a decorative stitch, you have to be careful that if you use too thick of a thread and bunch it up close together, it's just going to make a knot and break threads or a needle. So we'll go through all of that <clears throat> once we get to the sewing portion of this project. So between now and the next session, I'm going to start getting all my fabric together. I'm going to start cutting out my four inch squares of fabric and then we'll go from there. So just remember 289 four inch squares or five inch squares. I'm just going to use the numbers in the book. 289 four inch squares and 100 for the backing, the background and 115 four inch squares for the circle appliques. So that'd be a total of how many? Let's see here. <laughs> 389, 394, four, approximately 404 four inch squares of fabric is what this will take. Hoo-hoo. Sounds like a lot, but it's not bad. And quite honestly, it really doesn't take long to cut with a rotary cutter and a ruler. Because you can cut, I usually cut through eight layers of fabric with mine. Eight to ten. And that's only about 40 cuts. Something like that. It's not bad. 
And you could even make it, if you wanted to just to learn the technique, you could even make one much smaller. You could do make one to be the front of a pillow, a throw pillow if you wanted to. So at three and a half inches, if you made it five by five, that would be about a 17 by 17 inch throw pillow. You could even make it four by four and then make a four by four would be 12, would make a 14 by 14 inch throw pillow. So if you did four squares by four squares, 16 squares, that would make like a 14 inch throw pillow, which would be cool as well. Okay. Hi, Sandy. But this will be a lot of fun. And you could even do, if you didn't want to cover up the, the, the raw edges of it, you could even do like that type of applique that has the raw edge and then you take a fray and you fray the edges of it so it's really soft textured. You could even do it like that if you didn't want to put stitches over the raw edges of the fabric. There's so many different ways you could do this. Coffee, coffee. Here are some more of my little chickens. Now you can probably get, let me go over here. I'm gonna show you something real quick. My little chicken pin cushions or uh, pattern weights. I like calling them pattern weights also. That's, that's really cool. I ended up using buttons. I have jars of vintage buttons. I have a lot of vintage buttons. And I've just used some vintage buttons for the eyes. I was I tried the the knotted embroidery eyes and it just they just weren't big enough and it didn't turn out well and I wasn't happy with it. So I just went into my one of my button jars and I picked out buttons that were close. They didn't have to be an exact match just makes it a little bit more charming I think but I'm going to show you a closer up view of what I'm talking about here so there you can see that little button eye and on that side and then this one I did do like a French knot when I finished um, securing the button so it has you can see there it has um, a little pink thing that was the thread I used I used this heavier thread to attach my buttons to this so it was kind of decorative and all that fun stuff and this one here and this one this is the one I actually one of the ones I actually did last night Last night's episode. Pretty cool. Cluck, cluck, chicken truck. There we go. <laughs> so, any questions? So, your assignment between now and the next episode, I am busy, everybody, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. So, I was Saturday and Sunday we are going to do the book we'll go, I'll have two episode episode two and three will be next Saturday and Sunday next Friday night I am going to do show y'all how I make um, my bowl cozies because they make wonderful Christmas gifts as well that is my theme for my Friday nights here in December. This is a bowl cozy made out of 100% cotton fabric, cotton batting, and batik, cotton batiks on the outside and the inside. And yes, they are reversible. Super fun to make. If you like setting up at craft shows and art fairs and stuff, these are great sellers at that. 
as would my little chicken pin cushions. These would make great sellers as well. These smaller ones, they sell for six to eight dollars a piece, these chicken pin cushions. Lots of fun things. Okay. So that's that's it for today it was going to be a short one today well it's been 40 minutes so it's all good so listen everybody thank you so much for tuning in next saturday we will actually start cut we'll finish cutting and start our applique process and i am planning by the end of of our episode on sunday episode three to have all the applique done and then we can start piecing our squares together. Once the applique is done, the rest of it, there will, there will be four episodes in this because it looks complicated, but it's not the longest thing it's gonna to take to do is all the applique. But after that, it'll go together super duper quick and easy. So have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next Friday night. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.